Welcome back. So in the second half of our special regression section, we're going to cover moderation. So moderation is when one is interested in examining an interaction. So interactions are where we have two variables that when combined together create a different effect than when used separately. And it's their interactive component rather than their sort of just presence like in mediation that create this effect. And so we'll ask the question here, do violent video games make people aggressive? That's you know, a straightforward regression, but we'll see if this idea of callous, unemotional traits interacts with the number of hours spent playing video games per week. So we're, we're trying to see if there's this relationship between this unemotional traits and video games predicting aggression, but also their interaction. So I always think of interactions as sort of like the two faucets on the sink, where when you only turn on one, you get hot, or you turn on the other and you get cold. Interactions are when you turn on both, right? And you're trying to turn up and down the dials to get the right temperature. And so the idea behind mediation, what we just covered, is that one variable eliminates the relationship for the other. With interactions, it's that the two variables depend and play off of each other. And so we'll actually have a third IV here to measure the interaction. And so let's look a, a little bit more at this idea. So let's say these unemotional traits, right? So we range from no callous traits to high callous traits. So, um, you know, we range from being kind of caring to sociopath. <laughs> okay, not really, but you get the idea. And if we're saying that that's a moderator, we're saying the strength or direction of the, of the traits um, it affects the relationship between game playing and aggression. And so it's not just that the video games cause aggression or predict aggression, right? It's the video games plus these traits in different levels. And so we might find that combination that actually relates to aggression. And so visually, how does this work? Well, let's say here, um, if we somehow had this callous traits as a yes, no, for example, Okay, we don't, we're going to treat it as continuous, but let's say it is a yes, no. Then we've got our scatter plot of the hours playing video games with aggression. And we could do this as a, as a categorical scatter plot like we did in chapter four, right? So we would calculate or uh, create the, the lines here for each of those groups. And an interaction looks like a fan. So if you get an interaction effect, you will get some sort of fan effect with the lines present, no matter how you graph this. And so in this scenario, no callous traits shows no effect between the hours playing video games and aggression, okay? because it's the amount of callous traits that matters, right? So if you had none, we just don't see effect. It's flat. Linear regression is totally flat. Okay? The predictor is zero. If I have those callous traits, the more I'm playing video games, the more aggressive I am. Now, our callous variable isn't that simple. So we're gonna use it as a continuous variable and then that's where it gets tricky because we have to account for the fact that these are both continuous. Okay? We don't really wanna take a continuous variable and make it binary just to make this easier, although people do this, <laughs> don't do that you lose a lot of information that way that is very critical and interesting. So instead we'll treat it as continuous variable. And so when we start to do that, what we're actually doing is building this in sort of multi-D space. So this would be no interaction. It doesn't really matter what level of trait they have. The relationship between video games and aggression is the same. So all of these lines are parallel to each other and you get nice parallel lines on your graph, and it doesn't really matter which one is which. If 
it does matter, you'll start to see a fan effect of your lines if we flatten this graph out, fan effect of your lines, but essentially the, the slopes are different. So this slope is, is stronger and positive. This one's basically zero and this one's actually slightly negative. And so we get this effect where the, the relationship between hours playing video games and aggression is different for each of these sort of um, possibilities for callous traits. And while they're labeled low, average, and high, we're not separating them into groups. We'll sh I'll show you how this works here in a second. Um, but we're essentially saying at the low end, right, this is a continuum. And at the high end, we get these different slopes. And so that's what makes it an interaction rather than mediation. Because in mediation, we don't do any of this stuff, right? We just say, I added M, what happened? Okay. In this scenario, we're like, is there an interaction? Do we get this fan effect? where at different levels, we get different effects okay. versus M made this go away. <laughs> okay. So I'm really just trying to highlight the difference because people get these confused. Okay. So the way we write this out is that each person's score, right? Our outcome is predicted by B zero or B naught, right? This is our Y intercept okay. when all of the X's are zero times uh, I'm sorry, plus uh, our first slope for the first, what's called a main effect, right? Predictor A plus B2 times predictor B plus a slope as well for the interaction where you literally multiply them together. Okay? We won't do that, we'll make R do that, but it multiplies those two things with each other. Okay? Plus some sort of error, because okay? we never get everybody exactly right. And so we're basically saying the equation, our prediction, our model, overall model, is that each person's aggression score is some base level of aggression with nothing else in the equation. You know, none of these other things included. Okay. Um, plus uh, the number of hours gaming, plus their level of callous traits, plus that interaction. So one issue with adding a third variable that is simply the multiplication of the other two is that can make our slopes uninterpretable. Okay. So I can't tell you, if you tell me the slope of the interaction is 0.2, I'm like, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I don't know, right? And so what we can do is center our variables which is sort of like half z-scoring, where we transform a variable into um, being centered over the mean, which is the first half of, uh, of, of z-scoring, right? So it's x minus the mean. Okay, we won't actually z-score them because it's not necessarily completely standardized. So we'll just center them. And what that does is it actually helps us with our interpretation because of um, the second half of moderation where we actually look at the low end of the data and the high end of the data. So it can help our interpretation. Why? Well, let's go back here. If I look at this equation, right, and I center all of the variables. Okay, so I'm going to take gaming minus its mean, callous minus its mean, interaction minus its mean. We just pick up all of our variables and we move them to where zero is now the middle. And that's what's called, it's mean centering. That is interesting because what happens is at an average level of gaming, this, the gaming part of the equation drops out okay, because the average is now zero. And so if we were to mathematically start filling this in, like if we were to plug and chug, <laughs> as we used to say, in school, I don't know if they still use that with computers, but you know, plug and chug. Okay, start typing in some numbers. And I say, okay, tell me what's our aggression score at an average level of gaming? Well, we've made the average zero. So we'd fill in a zero here and a zero here, it would disappear. Okay. That is practically very useful okay. because that also, that means that now I'm just measuring callousness -ness. Okay, if I say it's an average level of callus, it drops out also and it becomes just the intercept. Okay, so just the average. 
Now, if I want to do, let's say, the average of gaming and um, the high level of callus, I now have a good representation for that. Now you can't actually z-score them, but it's not recommended. So it keeps it in the scale of the data. I've done it both ways, it doesn't hurt you, but most people just center them all over the mean. Okay, so you take each column minus its mean. Okay. Now the other problem it solves, I've seen this written in textbooks and then I've seen people say it's not true, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, it solves multicollinearity, right? We have taken our, our equation and added what is, a mathematically a multicollinear problem, right? So we've taken A plus B plus A times B. So we've used A twice. <laughs> and so centering sometimes can help you with the fact that you're adding another variable that is already technically in the equation. Okay, but we're adding their interaction. So it's not quite like adding the same variable twice. Now the easiest way to center them is to, to make them useful is take the score for the mean for that variable. Okay. And what that does is create the, um, it takes all of the variables. It means that the, if I plug in a zero, I'm saying here's the average score for this variable. Okay. And um, it's the effect of that predictor at the mean value for our sample, which is really nice because we've talked a lot about means being our model and um, zero is now a useful number. Okay. So I can tell you what the effect is at the average by filling in a zero. I don't have to find the average and type it all in and say, well, I've made the average zero for this moment. Okay. And it also tells me the average effect of that predictor across a range of scores for the other predictor. Okay. On that, we're gonna use that idea there. Um, so it's okay if that, cause like a little, like, what is she saying? We're gonna use this idea here in just a second. Okay. And so what happens if our, if our media, uh, I almost said the wrong one. What happens if our interaction is significant? What do we do? Okay. I've already told you that saying that the slope, the B slope for the interaction being 0.22 doesn't mean anything. And so this is true of all interactions. So this class doesn't cover interactions in ANOVA, that's in the next class, but this is true for all like interactive effects. Okay. You have to do something else. Okay. If you find that there is an interaction that's significant, you can't just look at anything really. You can't just like look at your equation and say, here's what's happened. You have to investigate, you have to dig in okay, and find what that means. So you're essentially saying something happened here. And then now I'm gonna run another test to figure out what that thing is that happened. Okay, so anytime you have an interaction effect, it's kind of a two part game, right? The interaction is important, it's significant, whichever one you like. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so it's back to our detective example. It's two parts. If the interaction is important, I have to then investigate where or what makes it good or interesting. Right? Now the really fun part is sometimes it's not interesting in the direction that you picked it in. So interactions have two variables, right? And we could pick one of them to investigate and you just, you're like, I don't, why did this work? Okay. Um, and it could be the other one. So, uh, it, you know, mathematically it doesn't matter to, to, you know, to the linear regression <laughs> if the interaction is interesting one way and not the other way. So I always tell people, um, you know, sometimes you have to explore them. You pick a direction, um, but sometimes when that is like totally uninterpretable, you change your mind and flip to the other direction. Now don't do both because my regression teacher will come in and haunt you in your sleep <laughs> where you analyze it both ways but when we're reporting things, um, sometimes there is an easier way to explain the interaction. Okay. All right, so if that interaction is significant, we often ignore what's called the main effects. Okay, main effects are the variables by themselves, X and our moderator. Okay, so here are gaming and callousnesses. Because if we say that the interaction is important, why would we look at each variable one at a time? 
Now, I can make an argument for why I would look at them because they're still part of the equation, right? But if I'm telling you that the, the effect is partially due to them being interactive together, kind of a, a two-part combo, why would I only look at the first part? Okay, is the idea. And then what do I do with my interaction significance? This is often called a simple effects or a simple slopes analysis. It's often called simple effects in ANOVA because we start calculating um, little t-tests and um, why are t-tests little? I don't know why. You start calculating regular t-tests, okay? <laughs> Not any different. Um, and effect sizes, right? In a regression, we're gonna start calculating uh, simple slopes. Why the heck are they called simple slopes? Because they're the slopes for one of the variables when the other one is held constant. And it's really easy when one of them is zero because it drops out of the equation and you're left with the other one. So it's called a simple slope because we've centered the variables and we're going to make them zero and look at what the slope is at, at different points of the other variable. Okay. And so centering it helps us out, helps us do that because then we just say, okay, here's the average. Well, the average is zero. So that variable goes away and we're left with the other one. And so it becomes simple okay, rather than interactive, which is a complex slope. Now, if our variables are categorical, what we're simply doing is calculating the slope for each group. Okay, if both variables are categorical, what we're doing is calculating mean differences. This is technically an ANOVA, okay? but re regression and ANOVA are not different. Okay. ANOVA is a special type of regression. I've said special types of regression a lot. Regression is all. This whole class is regression. Okay. Correlation is where one X, one Y. Okay. T-tests are when you have categorical variables in regression. ANOVA is when you have a bunch of categorical variables in regression. Okay. So everything we're doing is regression. But um, if we had two, let's say two different categorical variables and we told them to interact, that would be a, like a two-way ANOVA, okay. which we'll get to later. Okay. Um, so we're going to make this as hard as possible to show you the most difficult version because then you can do all of them, okay? We're going to do simple slopes with two continuous variables. Okay. If you have categorical variables, this becomes much easier. Just run the um, regression for each category. Now, here's the hard part. How do I, in that our interactive graph picture, look at the low end and the high end? Right? You've kind of, I, hopefully you're thinking, you've explained to me how to see the middle. Right? How do I look at the low end and high end? And so this is a, a common misconception when people report these, they report a slope for one standard deviation below the mean, the mean, and one standard deviation above the mean. So it's very tempting to think that we have taken the data and split it into these three little groups. That is not what we're doing. Okay. What we're doing is taking the data and moving it around. Okay. So the way I've always explained this is like a periscope on a submarine. Okay, so if you've watched the hunt for red October or any other good submarine movie. That's just the one I could think of, right? So they're looking with their periscope. Imagine that they cannot actually move the periscope. It's stuck. All they can do is look. All right, I'm gonna keep making this face because it's ridiculous and hopefully you'll get it. All right, so what we've done is we've taken all of our data that we had before that might have been 20 points above the periscope and we've moved it to where the mean is right in the middle where they can see it. Okay, like the eye doctor. Okay. And so at the average, we can we say that the score is zero. And so it's right here in front of my face. To get the low group, what do I do? Well, my periscope is stuck. So I'm gonna take the low end of the data and move it in front of the periscope so that I can see the slope for the low end of the data. Well, how do you do that? The low end of the data is on the low end, so I have to move it up to the middle. And that is one of the most confusing components of this. Okay. So the low group of people are who are, are the low group of the data 
are things that are one standard deviation below the mean. Well, to get them to my not moving periscope, because it's broken, I have to shift them up so that they're now in the middle. Okay. The middle is the middle when we started, so we can see them just fine. But our high group, they're up here. We got to move them down to the middle. So essentially what we do is we take our regression and we run it three times. Okay. Once for the average, so let's just see if this worked. If it did work, move everyone up so we can see the low end of the data, move everyone down so we can see the high end of the data. And then we've got um, what are traditionally considered simple slopes, one standard deviation above, one standard deviation below. Can you do other things? Yeah. I've seen people do point a half a standard deviation, a full standard deviation, et cetera. Um, I've seen people do a, like a whole bunch of crazy stuff, but this is the most common thing is these three. Okay. And so I just want to highlight again that this is backwards. The low people are below your periscope. You have to bring them up to the periscope. Okay. The high people are high, so you have to bring them down. So for the low group, you add a standard deviation. For the high group, you um, subtract a standard deviation because we're moving them to the middle. Okay. But we do it to the whole data set. So we're actually like shifting the whole data set around. Can I make a bad like, um, like here's my bad, my bad phone example. Okay, can we show the phone? Yeah, <laughs> okay. So, right, here's the middle. To see the low end, I have to move it over. Okay. To see the high end, here's the middle, I have to move it down. Okay. So we're shifting the whole data set around. We're not creating groups, we're just moving it around. So we can see. And if me being that goofy doesn't work, I don't know what will. Okay, so let's try it now. This example data set from the field book. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is pick a moderator. You can actually go either way. For a mediation analysis, you can you need to pick the right one, whichever one the problem defines or your theory defines. But for moderation, you know, you can, one can be X and one can be the moderator and you can flip them and that's fine. Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do for this example is continue to think about the thing that we can affect the most, which is the number of hours played. Okay. So what's the relationship between the number of hours played and aggression at these different levels of traits? Because okay. we kind of assume traits are harder to fix. So if they're at a high trait and the number of hours matters, we can hopefully fix both, but you can fix the number of hours a lot faster. Okay, so let's import that data set. And we can see here we have an ID variable we don't really need, um, aggression, video games, and the unemotional traits. Now, centering. We're going to do the same thing we did in the last lecture. I'm going to show you how to do this by hand, and then I'll show you the package version of this. So center your variables using scale, which is our z-score formula, but we're going to use um, the scale equals false here, the argument, where we tell it just to mean center, not to z-score. Okay. Because we don't want to create beta here, because then we, if we ran beta, we get a kind of a double standardized regression, which we don't really want. Okay, This is going to include the intercept. And so we don't want to standardize our variables because then we've kind of screwed up this idea of intercepts. So we're just going to move the data, linearly transform the data by subtracting the mean. Okay? That does not change the slopes. When you subtract and add a, a number to every column, it does not change the slopes. Um, you can use it if you want things to be beta. I actually don't recommend it. Okay? It's easier to interpret B because that's still in the scale of the data which we talked about a couple lectures ago. All right, so I'm going to create my Z video game one by using scale, scale because false, and Z callous traits. Now when I run those, we would, um, for data screening, analyze the model with the interaction, all three variables. So part one, part two, and the interaction. And then it has all the same considerations as your normal sort of regression with outliers that we did in the last week's lecture. Okay. So you don't actually have to create the interaction column. If you multiply them together using the little star, it does it for you. So with that, this equation here, aggression equals zvid times zcal, will actually create that full model for us. So it'll say, okay, zvid plus zcal plus zvid times zcal. 
Okay, so this is not using just the interaction, it's actually using all of them. Okay. And if you want to use the by hand code that I'm about to show you, make sure you put X first and your slope once or your um, moderator second. Okay. If you get it wrong, just flip them. Not that hard. Okay. So let's see what happens. Is our overall model significant? Well, it says it is, but let's go look. Okay. So here's our statistics, 3 and 483, 438, Ooh, sorry. And it's 38% of the variance okay. in aggression. That's pretty good. I would consider that a large effect because it's made up data. <laughs> so this would be considered a large effect because it is a, that's a lot to be able to predict aggression in people. Now, are our predictors significant? Yes, but we're mostly interested in the, sorry, uh, interaction effect here. And so I'd say, yes, this is an, uh, a significant predictor. Okay. What does B of 0.03 even mean? I have no idea. It doesn't mean anything. Okay, that's the contribution of the interaction to the equation, but me, me. So that's not what we're gonna interpret, okay? We're gonna calculate our simple slopes and interpret those. So how do we create our groups when we have our continuous variable? We're not really creating groups. This is a misnomer, but this idea is um, that people will say the low end of the data is one standard deviation below the mean. The high end of the data is one standard deviation above the mean. But we could do lots of different things. This is not the only thing you can do. Okay, it's just the most popular thing you can do. Okay. Well, we're going to create two new columns in our data of the moderator variable, which is callousness. We're going to create our low variable by adding a standard deviation, moving them from the low end to in front of my face because I can't see anything else because I'm old and blind. Okay, we're going to uh, have the high end by subtracting a standard deviation, putting it right here in the middle. And the rule is we have to bring them to the middle because we've centered it so that the middle zero is now the middle. So Z callus low is our Z callus variable plus one standard deviation because we bring them up. Z callus high, so minus one standard deviation and bring them down. And you could see um, it prints of, like very strangely with this V1 thing sometimes here, but um, you can see that here, right? We have our, this is our original variable. The mean is zero because we mean centered it, right? Here, now we've moved our low group, moved everybody up and the mean is now 9.6. Well, that's the standard deviation. Okay? So we've moved everything up a standard deviation. And now the mean is negative 9.6 because we move everything down a standard deviation. Now, just run those models again, but change out the callus variable to low and high. All right, so if you've done this correctly, m, the moderator, and x by m, those coefficients will not change. So if you're trying to report a coefficient and they're exactly the same in each model, you're looking at the wrong thing. Okay? What's gonna change is the other variable, x. So we're gonna see the effect of the callousness being low, average and high on video games. So let's see how that works. Okay. So at low levels of callousness, okay, media, mod model low here, what happens at low levels of callousness, okay, so these two will not change as we go. And if uh, you're now your p values for this one might change, okay, your overall model should not change. Oh gosh, here, okay, these two should not change. It's this one, okay, the other variable. Okay. So at low levels of callousness, video games are not related to aggression. It doesn't matter how much you put, how many, how many hours you've put into Zelda, because I will get to 100%. I will. <laughs> okay, speaking from experience, <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't change your aggression levels. Okay, 
or video game playing and aggression are unrelated. It's something else. <clears throat> so then I'd write the whole thing out here. I just didn't type out all the T values. At average levels of callousness, notice this is my original model. Okay. Again, 0 0.76, 0 0.02, these didn't change. But at average levels of callousness, video games predict aggression. Okay. So for every one hour of video games, you get 0.17 at aggression points, whatever scale that is. Cool. One more. At high levels of callousness, video games predict aggression and that effect is increasing. So it's 0.43. So we went from negative 0.09 to 0.16 to 0.43. So that effect, what's happening is as the callousness, -ness, callousness increases, the relationship between video game playing and aggression also is increasing. Okay, the strength of that relationship. And so these interactions, significant interactions create fan effects. The slopes will, will cross or create some sort of fan. Now they won't always be like negative, positive, positive or positive, negative, negative or anything like that. And they might all be positive but they will be different strengths. <clears throat> so we found that increasing levels of callousness lead to increasing effects, increasing slopes on video game time and aggression. Okay, a stronger relationship from video games and aggression. And I use ggplot here to create this graph. Okay. And one issue that you have is that the data is not literally split into low, medium, and high, right? The data just is. We were just kind of shifting it around so we could see it in front of our broken periscope. But for ggplot, we can't do that. We got to say, draw the line here. So this is actually a way to manually draw slopes on the graph. Okay. Now, okay, this is our cleanup code. Okay. And I started my graph. So I said, okay, it's in the master data set. I'm using my Z video games and aggression. And as long as you've put this in the same order where you did X times M, you'll get the proper graph. Okay. And so what I do is I say, okay, add all of the dots. We're just gonna add all the dots for the people down here. Okay. And I just made them a lighter color. And then geom AB line is how you draw a literal line. Okay, so you say, what's the intercept? Well, this is the low models coefficient number one. Well, the coefficient number one is always the intercept. Okay. Then the slope for that coefficient. Okay. So for our low group, this should be slightly negative. Just make sure we've done this right. Okay, you can actually also type in the numbers. This is just more reproducible because if you change your data set or update, you know, you have more data, this code will still work. Okay. Line type here is just a label, okay. negative uh, one SD. Okay, but make sure that label la matches down here too. And so that is this one. Da, 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 da. So our one standard deviation below, that looks like negative 0.09, so I probably did that right. Good. Do the same thing for average and for high. Okay, you notice know, so we're changing models here, low, medium, high. And then scale line type mangle just says, okay, I'm gonna make them dotted, dashed, and solid, and it's the negative one, average, and positive plus one, and named them simple slope. Okay. And so notice we get this fan effect. So at one standard deviation below the mean, our video games don't predict aggression. At one standard deviation above the mean is slightly positive. I'm sorry, at the average is slightly positive and one standard deviation above the mean is slight, it's more positive. Okay. Now, the package that I showed you in the last video also has a moderation for one, moderation one meaning just two variables interacting. Moderation two is when you have two moderators, so you have a three-way interaction. Don't do this unless you're very brave, okay? Um, where you enter the raw scores because it will automatically center for you. Okay, so you just say Y equals aggression, X equals video game, mean equals our traits. So these are the column names, okay? It has the same arguments where we could tell it to exclude outliers as before. Okay. 
And this is how you know it's really good fake made up data. Look at these dots, <laughs> they are all on the line, right? Nice, perfect <laughs> z-scored graph, some really lovely <laughs> um, homogeneity, homoscedasticity. So it meets all of the assumptions, okay? unlike the last made up data. Okay. Um, don't forget, we could look at our uh, I just want to show you what it's doing. So it actually creates all those columns that we did ourselves and does calculate our outliers for us. There are a couple of outliers. Okay. And we can see those graphs again if we wanted to. But I'd already kind of show you this. And then it, you can print out each model. So model, um, model one is our main equation. Okay. And it actually has um, the interpretation here. Okay. So this this is uh, something I am like <laughs> moderately proud of. So um, the interpretation point tells you, and it, it prints out these slash n so that it just print it should print like one line at a time. It doesn't quite work here in um, in uh, slide form, but at low level of callous traits, you see that every unit increase in video games predicts negative 109 increase in aggressions at average, blah, 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 blah. So this is the, the three different slopes all together. Okay. So I could also print out model low and model high. And then it creates us the same GG plot in the background. Okay. Now, it doesn't look quite like it's using those um, z-score columns, but I promise you it is in the background. It's just that, uh, see, it doesn't change. Centering doesn't, just makes it easier for us to interpret. It doesn't change the actual slopes. Okay. All right, so let's summarize all this up. Well, in this whole lecture set, we've covered mediation and all the considerations for that, moderation and how those two bad boys are different, and then some speckle, spe speckle, special packages for these models. Now there are other mediation and moderation packages that you can use. There's a bunch of them. Um, I just know that mine also includes all the cool data screening and I'm partial, so I'm showing you how mine works. But there are a bunch of other cool ones, like there's one called multi-level and uh, one called process R that does this kind of stuff as well. And then the last thing we covered is the kind of follow-up. So what happens when, you know, how do we interpret these models? So for mediation, we have to follow up with either a Sobel test or some bootstrapping. For moderation, we follow up with simple slopes. So end of our special regression section, we're gonna move on to t-tests in the next uh, section, which is a special regression with a categorical variable with only two levels. <laughs> so we're going to keep talking about linear models, but switch to um, examining categorical groups rather than continuous data.